So what was going through your mind whenever you became an N1 basketball star? Yeah, I absolutely had to pinch myself because in 1998, I saw M1 Mixtape Volume 1. And Skip to My Lou was my first like idol away from NBA players. You know, I love Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson, but then like, Skip to My Lou inspired me to take my ball handling to a whole other level. And then Hot Sauce, my next idol, a couple years later, Hot Sauce. And Mixtape Volume 3 came out. So then a couple years later, I go try out. I just go to the game as a fan for real. And then it just so happened they were having tryouts. And then, you know, to play against the M1 team that night. Yeah, so yeah. I try it out. Next thing I know, the crowd was, you know, going wild over a couple plays. I found myself in the building going back and forth with hot sauce. Had a little battle. And then they asked me to go on tour with them after the game. And I was like, absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah. opportunity of a lifetime. And then a couple weeks after that, the ESPN series aired. And I didn't even know that the contest was actually the focal point of the TV show. Yeah. All right? So everything was happening really, really fast. Like you said, I definitely had to pitch myself because these guys were my idols. Yeah, and it was crazy to see you come on there. You know, you were the only white guy on the team, you know what I'm saying? And like, you came with a whole different style. So whenever you were growing up in Oregon, were you just creating this flavor in your game back then? Or like, when you got the L1, you already had that in your package and then it just was able to just explode? Um, a little bit of both. So. Originally, I got with this trainer when I was in fifth grade. This yeah. trainer was way ahead of the game. Like now all the Instagram trainers, they all kind of train like he did. But this was like, you know, this is like 95 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first move he taught me in and out. Second move, in and out crossover. Third move was the Iverson crossover. Uh, the so, AI, we used to call it the DC crossover in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. So I was only about, you know, four feet tall, but I had that, that Iverson crossover that I would cross over like grown men. So I became known as like, the kid with white kid with handles. Yeah, but the then, white kid with the handles. Yeah, so, for sure. But then later, when N one came out, you know, I was inspired to take my creativity to a whole other level. And then when I got on the tour, I didn't have as much creativity to sit with it. Hot AO, these guys were legends before me, but they inspired me. And I took a lot of pieces from their game and incorporated just over the years to hopefully come every year with something new. Yeah. And you can really score the basketball though. You can like and not only do you have tricks, like you have the ability to put the in the whole a variety of ways, from floaters to finger rolls, reverses, mid ranges, fire mid ranges, like like a freaking ninety nine on two um, K or something. <laughs> um, what what has inspired you to continue? Because you're still a basketball player. You've been at you know the top of what people call the street ball game for a long time. So what inspires you to continue to stay in shape and driven as a basketball player? Um, well, I think it's rooted in my purpose, honestly. I think God gave me a gift um, to be able to emulate moves and, and entertain people with the game. And so for me, I feel like it's my purpose to inspire and impact people. So that's kind of what keeps me moving even until current day. And then I just found that, you know, some people, a lot of times, a person who sticks with something the longest has success. You know, yeah, yeah. I was reading an interview with Jay Z recently, and they asked Jay Z, like, what was the most genius thing that he ever did? And he said he just never gave up. And that was it. So I can relate to that a lot. So just staying with it, and, you know, I'll go until I can't entertain people anymore.